I have the honor and the pleasure of welcoming you here this evening. There's one thing I'd like to let all the visitors that don't know about, know about our church is that we believe in letting the Holy Ghost have his way. So on behalf of our pastor, S.E.C. McCullough, and our entire church family, I'd like to welcome you this evening. Our scripture this evening, we're coming from Psalms 34, verses 1 through 8. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make her boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. O oh, magnify the Lord with me, and let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord, and he heard me, and delivered me from all my fears. They looked unto him, and were lightened, and their faces were not ashamed. This poor man cried, and the Lord heard him, and saved him out of his troubles. The angel of the Lord encampeth round about them that fear him, and delivered them. O oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusteth in him. May the Lord add a blessing to this word. Now we would have our prayer by Deacon Stanley Ball. Thank you, Jesus. All eyes closed right now. All hearts focus in on Jesus. My Father, we thank you for allowing us one more time to celebrate the joyous occasion of one of your faithful servants, Lord Jesus. They say you should always give a person flowers while they're still living. This is a token of our appreciation to a shepherd that you have blessed us with, Lord Jesus. 28 long years of service are putting down her precious, anointed soul, sacrificing her time, her energy, her finances to bless this ministry. We thank you, my Father, for blessing her with such a shepherd as Pastor McCullough. We want to show, us, show her that we really appreciate her, we really love her, and we really thank her for just being a part of our life, strengthening our minds, our souls, and helping us with our destinies, Lord Jesus. To reach out, my Father, and touch everyone that had a part in this celebration, Lord Jesus. Touch the ones that made the sacrifice in their finances, Lord Jesus, to come to this occasion. The ones that took off of their jobs and changed their schedules, Lord Jesus. Bless my Father to speak of the hour, Lord Jesus, that she may find strength to touch us with a great word that we may find hope and love through, Lord Jesus. Bless us all to have a joyous time, my Father. And most of all, Jesus, allow your Holy Spirit to come down and touch this place as to do in the morning. This is my prayer. I'm accounted done. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the sweet Holy Spirit. Let the redeemed say, Amen. Yes, you're the center of my joy. And all that's good and perfect, it comes from you. You're the heart of my contentment oh for all i do jesus you're the center of my joy and you are why i find pleasure in the simple things in life you're the music in, in the meadow and the streams. The voices of the children, my family and my home. And when I'm all alone, your hand is there to hold. Oh, Jesus, you're the center of my joy. And all that's good and perfect, it comes from you. You're the heart of my contentment, hope for all. I do, and Jesus, you're the center of my joy. About 
heads, let's pray. Father, as we come now to celebrate this, your servant, we pray, God, that thou would have blessed, Lord God, the food we're about to receive, that it shall be strength to our bodies, that we use our bodies for your glory and not cease to give you praise. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, church. Give an honor to God, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. We thank the Lord for his presence because in him we live, move, and have our being. First and foremost, let me congratulate Pastor Essie McCullough for 28 years. Will you just stand up? And thank God that we appreciate the gift to the body of Christ. Praise the Lord. Congratulations. Truly 28 years. There must have been some perseverance and endurance and some tears and some heartache at some times. But we thank the Lord that you come this far by faith. So we rejoice with her tonight. Tonight is her night. My pastor has, has taught us that the way to be blessed is to rejoice with others. See, tonight is her night. Amen. So we rejoice when someone else is rejoicing. Amen. But I thank God because we have a reason to rejoice. Yes. Because God has given an Esther for such a time as this. Yes. Who preaches the word in season and out of season. Who is steadfast and unmovable and abounding in the work of the Lord. So I truly give thanks tonight. I consider it a privilege and an honor to speak on such a glorious occasion, and I thank you for having me to come. I want to honor my husband, Minister Jared Dixon. Will you show him some love? Amen. I honor my pastor, Pastor Dennis Bishop, First Walltown Baptist Church. I honor our ministers, Bishop Coleman, and each one of you, the entire household of faith. Let us look to the, word, to the Lord in prayer. Father God, we just come before you tonight, giving you all of the honor and all of the glory. You're worthy to be praised. Father, we thank you for the occasion that we're gathered. We bless you for 28 years of service and labor. We thank you for your woman servant, Pastor McCullough. We thank you that she is faithful, God. And Father God, we just thank you, God, for these, your people. We pray your blessings upon this service, Father. I decrease, you increase in this place. Oh, Father God, we commend this service into your hands. For it is in Jesus' name we pray. Let the church say amen. amen. Tonight we're here because we are truly honoring a great woman of God. And the message that the Lord gave me is really concerning the occasion because we're honoring a great woman of God. And the message he gave me is the God kind of honor. The God kind of honor. Truly, we're celebrating a vessel of honor. Second Timothy 2 says, but in a great house, there are not only vessels of gold and of silver, but also of wood and of earth, and some to honor and some to dishonor. If a man therefore purge him, from these things, he shall be a vessel unto honor, 
sanctified and meet for the master's use and prepared unto every good work. Want to speak tonight about the God kind of honor. I want to submit to you, first of all, a question. What would God define as real honor? I wonder if God and his angelic host stepped in here tonight and he did his own address. What would he say about honor? Because his ways are higher than our ways and his thoughts are higher than our thoughts. So if he was here tonight, I wonder what he would say about what he feels about his men's servant and his women's servants, whom he called to the front line. What would he say about those whom he commissioned and those he, whom he charged to such a high calling? Because a pastor does not call himself. A pastor does not call herself. It is a God idea. For if we could call ourselves. We would quit when we wanted to because sometimes it get hard out there in the vineyard. But because we didn't call ourselves Jehovah Elohim who saw fit before the foundations of the world set apart and chose servants who would stand on the front line. It was El Elyon, the most high God, who says, I'm going to choose servants who will cry loud and spare not. Before the foundation of the world, ask the prophets of the old, like Jeremiah, who said, before I formed you in the belly, I knew thee. And before you came out of the womb, I sanctified thee and ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. He said, I ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. See, in the natural, you have to be ordained to be a pastor. But pastors, but God ordains his pastors before they come through the corridors of time. He ordains them before they come down the birth canal into humanity. God ordains his chosen before the sperm meets the egg. Come on, somebody. Mm. What would he say tonight, the God kind of honor, to those whom he's given a charge to keep and a God to glorify? See, when you have a charge to keep, you can be persecuted but your commitment to God is stronger than the persecution that you face. See, Jeremiah at times wanted to quit. And when he thought about it, he said, I can't quit because it's like fire shut up in my bones. See, your true calling will not leave you. It keeps pressing in you. It keeps stirring in you. And even when Judas kiss you on your cheek, you take the towel and you wash his feet. That's called a God servant. Only somebody that's called by God could take a Judas and still take the towel to his feet. What would God say about his chosen tonight? Because we're here to honor the woman of God. So I ask the question again, what is the God kind of honor? Let me submit to you that real honor does not start with a banquet and it does not end with a banquet. In other words, real honor cannot be contained in a one day event. I'm going to say that again. Real honor does not start with a banquet and does not end with a banquet. Real honor is a virtue that proceeds out of the heart. It is a God virtue. In other words, the God in me recognizes the God in you. 
See, the reason that this generation is void of real honor is because this generation is void of God. We're taking God out of everything. And that's the reason we see even rebellion raising up in our youth. When the scripture says, honor your mother and honor your father. And the reason you see such rebellion is because honor is a God virtue. Help us, God. The reason that some people have difficulty truly honoring the man of God and the woman of God because the God in them have not recognized it yet. Mm. As God has allowed me to preach in different churches and different ministries, I've noticed something in the body of Christ. Many times we do things out of formality. Help us, Holy Ghost. We do things out of tradition. And we do things for the sake of calling it a program. And our hearts are far from the purpose. Now Jesus dealt with that problem in his day and time. Matter of fact, he rebuked the Sadducees and the Pharisees. He said that the people Draw nigh unto me with their mouth. He said, but their heart is far from me. He said they draw nigh with their lips. In other words, lip service. But he said that their heart is far from me. See, it's time out for lip service. God is looking for people who are genuine. He's looking for people who will be real. God is raising up a people that will love what he loves and hates what he hates. I'm talking about the real kind of honor tonight. What would God say about real honor? It doesn't take much study in the word of God to really see his heart concerning his chosen. Let me tell you that God has a tender heart towards his chosen. God honors his servants. That's why he said in Psalm 105 and 15, touch not mine anointed and do my prophets no harm. It doesn't take much study to see that he's very peculiar to how he wants us to be treated. He told Abraham that those who bless you, I will bless. He said, those who curse you, he said, I will curse. You need to know that if you belong to the Lord tonight, that God is concerned about how you're treated. We need to know tonight that God is on our side. That's why the world better be careful how they treat the men of God and the women of God. Because the Lord said, because I'm for you, I'm more than a world against you. Because I'm for you, he said, I'll fight your battles. When you know whose you are, you don't have to get upset about who is working against you. Because God said, I got your back. He said, I got your back. Thank you, Holy Ghost. And so those that labor in the word of God, according to Timothy 517, he said is worthy of double honor. He said worthy of double honor. And my assignment tonight is to look at honor from a different perspective. How can we really walk it out? Because so many times we know what the words say. But how do we really live what it say? 1 John 3.18 says, My little children, let us not love in word, neither in tongue, but in deed and in truth. How can we really give the God kind of honor? Let me just share you with you a testimony that my father gave me when I first went into ministry. He told me two things. He said, stay humble because before honor is humility. 
And then the second thing he said, he said, make sure that you carry the burden of the ministry with your pastor. He said, don't be a pew warmer. But he says, carry the burden with your pastor. So tonight, I want to talk about how we can truly be a blessing. Because tonight is her night, is that right? Amen. See, you'll have a season when God speak a word to you. Amen. But that's not my assignment tonight. Amen. So my assignment is not to preach about a bigger, bigger, bigger call or a better blessing for you tonight. Amen. Tonight is pastor's night. Amen. 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 So we want to give a word. How can I really be a blessing? Because how many know we're called to be a blessing? Not only do we receive blessings, but God has called us to be a, a blessing. So my prayer is that the Holy Spirit would empower us and birth out the kind of honor that really comes from God. At many anniversaries, you know, we give cards and we give money and we give presents and that's all good. We're supposed to do that, amen? We're supposed to give and share. And matter of fact, the scripture even speaks of that. It says, now, if someone has sown into your life spiritually, then we need to bless them with our physical gifts, amen? But then when I was meditating, God said, one of the greatest gifts that you can give don't cost a dime. It's the kind of honor. Uh, the God kind of honor. Have you ever gotten something from somebody and you know they really didn't want to do it? It didn't really bless you until you know that thing came from the heart. So I want to share with you five things that you can do to show real honor. The God kind of honor. Because when you understand what a pastor really goes through, and I want to just, just share with you something my pastor said. He says, a good number of church members do not fully understand the ministry of the pastor. Unless you live under his or her roof, you really don't understand the pressure. And so tonight, it's, it's worth our time to really show the God kind of honor. So I want to share those things with you, and then when God says I'm through, I'll take my seat. Number one, we should respect the office. Let me say that again. Respect the office. Sometimes people are focusing on people in the natural. Instead of seeing them in the office that they have been assigned. See, a lot of times, pastors are very close to their sheep, and a lot of times they're, they're going to graduations, and they're going to baby showers, and they're mingling up among the people. But you can never be so close that you forget to respect their office. Amen? Amen. We can't forget the office that God has called them to. The scripture says in Hebrews 13 and 17, Obey them that have the rule over you and submit yourselves for they watch for your souls as they must give an account. They have to give an account to God that they may do it with joy and not with grief for that is unprofitable for you. Respecting the office. You know when I think about it, even the secular world knows how to respect somebody's office. Matter of fact, if George Bush would walk in here today, even though some of us may not be particularly crazy about how he has ran his uh, election time, but we still would respect his office and call him President Bush. And so many times we don't respect the office in which our leaders walk in. So many times we look at them in a natural sense, and, and Jesus faced the same problem. In Matthew, not Matthew, Mark 6, 1 through 6, the scripture reads, And he went from this and came into his own country, and his disciples followed him. And when the Sabbath day was come, he began to teach. 
in the synagogue. And many hearing him were astonished, saying, From whence did this man say these things? And what wisdom is this which is given unto him, that even such mighty works are wrought by his hand? Now watch the progression. Is not this the carpenter? Help us, Holy Ghost. The son of Mary, the brother of James, and of Judah, and of Simon, are, and are not his sisters here with us? You know what I'm saying? Somebody might see you today. And they knew you way back when. They say, wasn't that the one that used to drink and drive? Wasn't that the one that used to go from person to person? Help us, Holy Ghost. And you have to say, that's what you knew. You knew me back then, but you don't know me now. I'm not that same person anymore. He says, is this not the carpenter? Now, let me just bring it a little closer. Isn't that Betty Lou cousin? And isn't that the son of Brother John? And, and they look at people in the natural. But we can never forget who they are in the realm of the spirit. When we forget to see people in the realm of the spirit, then sometimes we miss the gift in them. Because the scripture goes on to say, but Jesus said unto them, a prophet is not without honor, but in his own country and among his own kin and his own house. Because sometimes it's our very own that doesn't recognize what's really on the inside of us. Help us, Holy Ghost. Sometimes it's the very ones that you walk with and you eat with and you commune with that don't realize the seed of greatness down on the inside of you. Sometimes it's the very one that you've preached to, that you've prophesied to, that don't recognize the big God in you. Help us, God. I have seen, I have gone to churches and spoke a word and it was received. And then the pastor say, well, I just spoke that same word. Well, why is it you received it when I came from out of town? But you didn't receive it when your old man spoke it unto you. Because a lot of times we don't honor those who are right with, there with us. Respecting the office. We should not override the vision of our pastors. We should not override the instructions they have been given by God. See, pastors are in a, a peculiar place because they have a mandate from God. They can't please people. Galatians 1 and 10 says, For do I now persuade men or God? Or do I seek to please men? For if I yet please men, I should not be the servant of Christ. In other words, if you're going to serve God, you can't please people. You cannot be a man pleaser if you're going to serve God. Because sometimes you have to pull away from the crowd. You got to do things that are unpopular to obey God. Respecting the office. The second thing that we can do is to help carry the burden of the ministry. Help carry the burden of the ministry. In Exodus 18, we find Moses who was taken on too much. And his father-in-law became concerned. The people were taxing Moses day in and day out. And Moses was trying to accommodate the people because a real shepherd tries to meet the needs of the people. And Jethro said, what are you doing, Moses? He's, he said, this is too much. He said, the thing that you're doing is not wise. He said, you will surely 
wear yourself out. For this task is too heavy for you, and you cannot do it alone. So he advised Moses to get some help because a pastor cannot carry a ministry by himself or by herself. It is too much because a pastor really is on call 24 hours a day. A lot of times she, when you get to sleep, a pastor is awakened and said, you got to pray. A lot of time a pastor will get an alarm in his spirit. You better pray for such and such and so and so because something is going on. Well, we are busy getting our good night rest. A lot of times pastors are called to referee disputes. Can we be real tonight? You can tell in the spirit when your atmosphere and your climate is not right. You can tell when brother so-and-so is mad at deacon so-and-so and, -so and coming to church, one go to one side and the other go to the other side. Help us, God. That places a burden on the pastor. It's just like if you have kids and your kids begin to fight one another, that hurts you. Is that not right? And one of the ways that we can keep the burden off the pastor is that we truly walk in love. Pastors have to deal with so many personalities, so many different temperaments. And you know what I found? You can't please everybody because you can do your best and somebody won't like it. You can preach too long. And they was like, she didn't preach entirely too long. Then if you did a 10-minute sermon, they said, well, she must not have stayed before the Lord because she didn't have much to say. You'll always have somebody who's not happy. You'll always have somebody who's going to complain. That's why a pastor has to keep his or her ear to the mouth of God. Because when you get into pleasing folk, it just ain't going to work. Many times pastors do not enjoy the holidays like we do. Many times they're busy. If someone died, they have to go and to see about that family. Many times when someone is rushed to the hospital, a pastor's going to be there. And a true shepherd's heart takes the burden. They take that burden and they help carry that burden. So we must be mindful to help carry the burden of the ministry. See, when your pastor comes in on Sunday morning, that's not the time to drop a truckload of issues on him or her. Some things we can handle ourselves because a our pastor has to stay focused on the word of God. And we got to be in our places. In, on Sunday morning, it should never be that you're only committed when it's your group's turn. Help us, Holy Ghost. You should not be committed when it's my choir time to sing or my Sunday to usher. We're supposed to support the ministry. A pastor should not have to worry about financial matters, worry about if the tithes and the offerings are being given. They should not have to worry about that. They should be able to keep their ear to the mouth of God. Praise God. I told you this is hot night. I got to do what God say do. I got to do what God say do. How can I be a blessing? And I'm not preaching something that I got out of a book. I'm preaching something that I lived and had to walk out. When we started two services at my church, God said be there for eight and be there for 11. Carry that ministry. Go in and pray. Go in and intercede. Pull down the strongholds. Good God. Carry the ministry. Help carry the burden of the ministry. When we come to the house of God, we ought to have one thing on our mind. That is kingdom work and kingdom ministry. Come in praying. Come in pulling down strongholds. Come in focus on the Holy Ghost. Mm. Come in focusing on souls. 
Thirdly, how can we truly honor, encourage your pastor? Everybody needs encouragement. Amen? Everybody needs encouragement. We should all strive to become encouragers. And encouragement can come in many forms. You know, it blesses a man of God, a woman of God, just a, a simple thank you sometimes. The message blesses me. Thank you for the word. Thank you for being there for me. It don't have to be an anniversary to get a little card and slip a little something in it sometime and say, I just appreciate you. Thank you for how you've blessed me and my family. Thank you for praying my son through. Thank you for praying my daughter through. Amen? Pastors need that feedback because pastors are so busy encouraging others. When you, you have to take the time to encourage your pastor. Because when I think about it, I say, you know, pastors support all of our stuff. You know, when we have choir anniversaries, the pastor's there. When we have usher board anniversary, the pastor's there. Even coming sometimes to our children's graduations. But then when it's time for the pastor to be blessed, people withdraw. People don't feel like they need to support. Help us, God. Mm. My God. Just pouring out and pouring out and pouring out. But we have to learn how to be a blessing. Another way that you can encourage your pastor is to show up. My pastor have a saying, he said, now, if I'm obligated to prepare the word and I'm spending all these hours to prepare the message, he said, the least you can come do is be there and hear it. Amen. I'll say amen to that one. To come and to get the word. I'm talking about little things that will be an encouragement, faithful support and faithful attendance. Blessing in little things, like your words. Amen. Fourthly, praying for your pastor. First Timothy 1, 1 and 2 says, I ex exhort therefore that first of all supplications, prayers, intercessions, and giving of thanks be made for all men for kings and for all that are in authority, that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and honesty. We have to pray for those who are called to the front line because many times Satan launches his attacks against the head because if I can get to the head, I can get to the body. And not only pray for the pastor, but pray for their families. Because a lot of times the enemy would target the families of the pastor just to get to the pastor. But the Bible tells us that we ought to pray for those that are in leadership. We ought to ward off the fiery darts of the enemy. See, when we really pray like we're supposed to pray, We'll see the glory of God just manifest in our church, in our house, in our lives. And the children of God have power. How many know you have power when you pray? God has given us authority. He said, whatsoever you bind on earth is bound in heaven. Whatsoever you loose on earth is loose in heaven. How many know when you start exercising your keys of the kingdom? My Lord, there's no devil in hell that can stand before you when the people really began to pray. Charles Spurgeon was asked one time, where do you get your power from? He took them down to a room that was in the bottom of his church and showed them two and three people who was locked together hand to hand and praying in the spirit. He said, that's where my power comes from because nothing happens in the realm of the spirit until people pray. He says, if my people, which are called by my name, will humble themselves and pray and turn from their wicked ways, then, only 
only then will I hear from heaven and heal their land. When people begin to pray, yokes are destroyed, burdens are removed, people are saved. We go into the next dimension when we pray. Mm. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, God. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, God. Jesus. Mm. Thank you, Father. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Mm. Hallelujah. 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 I got to come off this paper a minute because I'm hearing the Holy Ghost. Oh, God. My God. The name of this church is ringing in my spirit. New direction. God said it's time for a new direction. The name of your church is even prophetic. It's prophetic. He said now it's time to turn a new direction. But God said, thank you, Holy Ghost. He said, I cannot take them in the direction that they need to go until they first realize that the oil flows from the head. He said, my God, there is a new dimension for this ministry, and God is going to take you there, but you first got to push your head. Come on, somebody. You got to get behind a woman of God, and you got to pray her through. Somebody got to stand with the woman of God and bind up the fire darts of the enemy because there is a new direction. God is going to shift you. He's going to take you to a place where you look the enemy in the face and you able to call down strongholds. Come on, somebody. Woo. Wait a minute. Moses. When they were fighting Amalek, and he was holding his hands up, help us, God. And every time his hands would get weak, they would begin to lose the battle. And Aaron and her would go back and prop his hands back up again. And they would win. When his hands got weak, help us, Holy Ghost. They were going to lose. But every time they came back and held up their hands, they were weak. What does that say? What does that say? That when my pastor's hands get tired, I got to move in position and hold her hands up. Watch the revelation. Because if I hold her hands up, we win. We win. We win. But as soon as I let her hands fall, we lose. Mm, 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 mm. Somebody ain't got it yet. When I hold her hands up, we win. Why is that, God? But as soon as her hands start hurting and they start falling, he said, we lose. Mm, mm, mm. Oh, oh, God. Mm, mm, mm. God is calling Aaron. He's calling her to stand up. He's calling Aaron's. He and he calling herbs. He's calling some people that were burned the midnight oil and began to walk the floor, who will speak to the atmosphere, who will call down the strongholds. Where's the Aaron and the herbs that cancel demonic assignments? The Aaron and the herbs that will hold up the woman of God. He says, Moses' hand got heavy. And he took a stone and they propped it up. Mm. 
And he says, and Aaron and Hur stayed up his hands, the one on the one side and the other on the other. And his hands were steady until the going down of the sun. Mm. Help us, God. Mm. God is calling us to hold up the hands. And let me let you know a secret. Because when you hold up your pastor's hand, and I'm telling you what I've lived, destinies are birthed out. Miracles are manifested. When you hold up the hands, because God's not going to change his order. He said the anointing flows down from the head. When you hold up the pastor's hands, then you will see miracles. I sense another dimension. It's another dimension coming forth. It's coming forth. That's right. It's coming forth. I feel it. Mm. It's coming forth. It's coming forth. And nothing's going to stop it. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. See, I'm not afraid or ashamed because I paid a price. I paid a price. And let me tell you something. It's a lot of family in here. And one of the reasons that the mighty works that's in you is the same reason Jesus faced. Too close. Kin. Uh, mm. A prophet is not without honor, except in his own country. Mm. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Mm. But I thank God for a new direction. Now watch this. When the oil began to flow, some people have some things in them that that's going to be burped out. Mm. When you hold up the woman of God and the man of God, I'm talking about real honor. Thank you, Father. 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 Thank you, God. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, God. Mm, 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 mm. Thank you, Jesus. Mm, 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 mm. Thank you, God. Thank you, Father. And the last thing I want to share with you. Mm, mm. It's a way that you can really honor the woman of God is when you bear fruit. Third John 4 says, I have no greater joy than to hear that my children walk in truth. When you really begin to walk in the things that you have learned and heard, it is a blessing. Jesus had the same attitude. If you read John 15 and 8, he says, Herein is my Father glorified that you bear much fruit. So shall ye be my disciples. What brings honor is when we bear fruit. See, the devil doesn't care that we carry a Bible. He just don't want you to bear fruit. He doesn't care about you coming to church every Sunday. He just don't want you to bear fruit. He doesn't care that you are at every revival. He don't want you to bear fruit. He doesn't care that you can quote every scripture in the New Testament and the Old. Just as long as you don't bear fruit. Because Jesus says when you bear fruit, he says, herein am I glorified. 
Hebrews 13, 7 says, Remember them which have ruled over you, who have spoken unto you the word of God. Now listen to what's next. Whose faith follow. Whose faith follow. Considering the end of their conversation. In other words, what would really bring honor, even beyond the gifts, beyond the presence, beyond the banquet, is when you really bear fruit. I think back in my own life. When my pastor was teaching about stewardship and paying your tithes. And I wasn't paying tithes at that particular time. But then when I learned to trust God because I was taught that I needed to be a good steward over my finances. When I began to pay my tithes and prosper in my finances, how many know that the God, man of God was honored because his labor is not in vain? When you began to walk in love, and I know your pastor has taught you about love, when you can cover a multitude of sin, when you can be despised and rejected, but you come in there on Sunday morning and say, I love you anyhow, that blesses the woman of God. When you truly walk in truth, when you no longer let the devil steal your joy. I remember a time when my pastor said, don't let people keep stealing your joy because when you got joy down on the inside, the devil can't take that away from you. See, this joy that I have, the world didn't give it to me and the world can't take it away. See, too many times, you know what vexes a pastor? You getting all upset. Pastor such and such did this. Pastor such and such do that. But when you're going to learn how to not let those weapons form to get you, mess you up, because they can't prosper anyway. See, the Bible never said that they wouldn't be formed. He said they won't prosper. That's what he said. When you begin to walk in truth, when you learn how to praise God for real. See, my pastor used to say, he said, I'm not going to pump and prime you because real praise come out of your spirit. But when you know God for yourself, you will bless the Lord at all times and praise will come out of your mouth. When God has been good to you, nobody has to tell you to say thank you, Jesus. Because when you know what I know, if it had not been for the Lord on my side, where would I be? I don't care about anybody talking about my praise. Because you have people who would say she needs to sit down. But you don't know like I know what the Lord has done for me. For the Lord has been good unto me. When you began to rise above of mediocrity when you know who you are in Jesus Christ uh, that brings honor to the father when you start understanding your purpose and knowing who you are in Jesus Christ see some people have an identity crisis uh, they don't know who they are but when you've heard the word of God preached to you uh, you know that I'm the head and not the tail you know that I'm more than a conqueror in Jesus Christ you don't worry about the tactics of the enemy my God when you began to pray because how many know that you can pray for yourself you don't need the deacon to pray for you you can lay hands on yourself Say, in the name of Jesus, Satan, I bind your works in the name of Jesus. I know that I've been given authority. I know who I am in Jesus. Mm. I'm talking about bearing fruit. Really walking in what you've been taught and learned. You know, when you have been taught and you're walking in it, your pastor can go and leave a church and not be concerned that those who have empowered, they're carried on. And we have been taught that if one person steps down or one person leaves, if you're an auxiliary or in a group, it still should go on. Because when people begin to walk in truth, that bring glory to the Father. 
So I, I say tonight, what is the God kind of honor? We're here at a banquet, and on the banquet ticket, it says honoring God's woman. But the Holy Ghost posed the question to me. What is the God kind of honor? Because real honor is not a banquet. I, when I was preparing the message, I started crying because God started bringing the office of pastor in my spirit. And he said, you know, I have soldiers who are bleeding because they give out and they give out and they give out. But they don't understand they got us so bad. And he said to me, so many times as I look in the services, the real kind of honor is not there. And so I start to pray, God, how can I really be a blessing? And that's what I want to leave you with tonight. How can I really be a blessing? Because you're going to be blessed. You're going to be blessed. But the question tonight is, how can I be a blessing? I can be a blessing by, number one, respecting the office. No matter how close you are, respect the office. I can be a blessing by helping carry the burden of the ministry. I can be a blessing by encouragement, which is free. I can be a blessing by truly praying for my pastor. And I can be a blessing when everything that she have taught and ministered on began to manifest in my life that will bring no greater joy. So I leave you with those thoughts tonight. And I told you, tonight wasn't your night. That wasn't my, it wasn't my assignment to preach about your blessing. But my assignment was, how can I be a blessing? And I pray when you leave from this place that you would ask the Holy Spirit. Because as I mentioned before, the God kind of honor is not natural. It's spiritual. The God kind of honor comes from my spirit, man. Because man don't submit. Do you know in the natural, man resists submitting. Submission is spiritual. That's why people struggle with it. It's spiritual. When you submit, you're saying, God, I trust you enough that I will follow your word. I trust you enough that I humble myself. And before honor is humility. God bless you. Amen. We truly, truly, truly thank you, Evangelist Dixon, for that word. And I think we all should stand and give her one more big round of applause for that word. Amen. First of all, I've got to stop and tell God thank you. Paul said, I thank the Lord that he counted me faithful, putting me into the ministry. And she said, this is not a man thing. This is a God calling. Had not God called me, I would not be here today. But I am grateful to God that he counted me faithful and put me into the ministry. I thank God for all of you who have been here tonight. I want to thank God for everyone who has been with me since the first day of this ministry in the first year. And I said, by the time I got into the third year, it was to me the hardest year that I've ever had to go through. And I thought to myself, I think I've had enough of the ministry, God, I'm going to quit in this year, and it was the third year. I remember all the days when I hated coming to church. 
because of the criticism and people who don't understand the thing that you go through in a ministry. I thought about the days when I would sit in the pastor's study and bawl and cry. Get in my car and cry all the way to church. Sit in the pastor's study. And God would say to me, dry your tears. And I'd dry my tears and I'd come running out of the pastor's study crying. I'd be singing the song as hard as I could. I'm a soldier in the arm of the Lord. And I realized something, that soldiers go to war and there is a likely chance that you just might be killed. Paul declares we are killed all the day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. But in all of these things, we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. I thank God because he gave me a work to do for him. Many do not understand why they have shepherds. God raised up a shepherd, first of all, to be watchman on the wall. If many of you understood what God wanted to do with your life, you would take the time to stop and talk to me. While you are busy playing and acting up, I'm looking to your future two and three days down the road. I know what's going to happen to you in 2010 right now. Some people don't understand that God put you with people to watch out for your soul. And I used to tell a lady everything that was going to happen in her life, who she was going to marry, who she was with, everything would happen because she was close to me. And one day she left the ministry, and I told her when I saw her later, I said, let me tell you something. I said, God placed me as your watchman on the wall. You are moving away from me. I will not be able to see for you because you break the connection when you move away from a shepherd that God places over you to watch for your soul. Second of all, my calling is that God placed me as a shepherd because if there is anything that you need, if there is any prayer in your life that needs to be prayed, then God place a shepherd there to do that for you. That's how much God loves you. I was sitting in church on Thursday night as Bishop Coleman was preaching, and I heard the words that Jesus looked out on the people, and he saw them as sheep having no shepherd. And he had compassion on them because they had no shepherd. God loves you so much. He want to make sure that you have a shepherd. But most of all, he wants you to have a shepherd who loves you. You can go to any church. Look at somebody say, you can go to any church. You can go to any church. Sit up under any pastor. But the key is, do they love you? A shepherd loves you. A shepherd loves you. Loves you, don't care what you do, don't care what you say loves you in the house. God placed me here to watch over your soul. I will do that to the best of my ability. You know, I, I, I was uh, sitting, I was thinking, I said, God, this is just like a, a, a play. The only thing is, this is real life. And God said to me, he said, Essie, he said, the curtains are opened up once again. This is the 28th scene. And just like every year, there were those who participated in the play. He said, I yet have more people coming in to play to be a part of the program. And he took my mind back to vision that he had given unto me. And I remember one of the visions when God showed me how he picked me up and carried me on the wings of God's hand and carried me into the heavens and showed me some things that I would go through and showed me a cross in front of this, in front of it. And then he took me straight into the heavens. And I remember seeing the, 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 the multitude of God sitting on the throne. All I knew was his image was there. And I was sitting on one side of the throne and I looked around and I knew I saw Jesus. It, he was as if he was just pure white from head to toe. But I knew I saw Jesus. Then God changed the scene. And he took me to a place where it was like I was out in the desert. And I was standing up on a lifeguard. 
thing, and I was standing up on top of it. And I saw multitudes of people, numbers I could not number. And that's when God began to speak to me, and he said, that's it, I said, go. Because at that time, I told God I didn't want to preach, and I certainly didn't want to pass the people because I knew what I'd be in for. It is not easy to stand and love people and look at them. You have to love them with the love of God when you know the devil is in them. You have to love people with the love of God when you know that they've done something to hurt you and want to see you hurt. You have to love them with the love of God. My thing is, as Paul said to Timothy, Timothy, when he got ready to leave, he said, Timothy, you be strong in God's grace. He said, my prayer is that you will be able to teach to faithful men the thing that I've taught you. I want to give somebody a word. I want to give somebody a word to take back to the enemy who said that it is a family affair. You write about it, because this is the family of the living God. I said, this is the family of the living God, and anybody that's in this church with me is with a living God. Yes, it's a family affair. Glory to God. Not only that, but I thank God for knowing one thing. It had, you know what? A person would have to be saying something for themselves to have family members follow them. I mean in a natural family. Some folks don't have anything to do with some of their family. But to have so many family members follow me says something about my life. Somebody ought to be testifying to that and telling God, thank God for a person like that. But I thank God for my family who believe in me and what I say to them because every word that God has spoken has come to pass. I thank the Lord. We're going to a new level getting ready to add on to our ministry while we are struggling in finances because God's got people coming from High Point, Connorsville, Greensboro, all the way from Virginia. Hear me when I say it. God help people coming. Someone is coming who has a jewelry business. Someone is coming to help me build new direction. God is taking care of his house. Keep on praying for me through the direction. I thank God you've been with me 28 years. This right here is dedicated to uh, my grandma. No, I said my mom people from the spot, but I'm going to do it anyway. So, um, Dave, let's get this back. Okay. Yeah. G-O-D. Happy days. Okay. Yo, uh. I'm a young man in the cold world. Lord knows I show no weakness. Devil try to take me in, but I show no weakness. Gotta stay strong, gotta show my love through the song. I'ma dance just like David dance. I'ma walk right through the storm and the rain. I'ma shine just like a wedding rain. I'ma overcome battle, God showing no pain. Everybody know that my flow so right, but it won't be nothing if it wasn't for God. So therefore, God, I show much respect. One day, I'ma fly just like a jet. I ain't trying to be a sinner. Got to let the devil know, forget him. I'm going to always be a winner. God loves you, no matter complexion. Devil, I'm headed in a new direction. Uh, yes, I'm a man of God. G-O-D, yes, so holy. God showed me how to serve him. Voices of God, yes, I heard him. Nah, the devil ain't hurting me. I'm a holy sanctified. I spread my wings and glide. Fell down, but I still Still got pride, slowly brushing off my shoulders. Yes, I'ma fight this soldier. We here now, devil move over. It's a long ride, but God's my sofa. Yeah.